what has playing Emily and being an executive producer on this project taught you most about yourself? Well, uh, as far as playing Emily, I feel just forever inspired and forever grateful uh, for her and her work and this show um, for introducing me to it. And I mean, I got to spend the last three or so years playing a very strong-willed, determined, powerful woman um, who really paved the way for, for women today, I feel. And um, again, like I mentioned, forever inspired by her ability to live her life unapologetically herself. Um, and although she might have been knocked off her feet quite a few times throughout her life and felt completely unseen and misunderstood, it never kept her from doing what made her feel most alive. And that was her writing. And um, yeah, she's amazing. Oh, that's beautifully said. Um, how important was it for you to sort of rewrite Emily's story and show kind of the beautiful complexities of female poets and artists who have been, you know, history has labeled them as recluses and crazy? I was very excited uh, about <laughs> everything about this project, but I remember when I first heard anything about it all i got all i all i really took from what i the the short snippet that i was told was a period piece about emily dickinson right and so <laughs> yeah. your mind only kind of goes one place um and i'll never forget reading the first two episodes of season one and feeling like this is so unique and so fresh and so just it felt new it felt different and i was so excited about the way that this woman was written and the fact that it was written by another woman. Uh, this show is created, written, directed, and produced by um, Elena Smith, who is quite literally a genius. And um, I am, again, grateful and just in awe of, of what she's created in this show. And I think it's amazing that it, uh, it proves those people wrong that may have put her in a box, in that box of thinking she's this depressed, uh, you know, recluse who never found love. Um, she's a whole lot more than that. <laughs> Hell yes. No, I remember seeing the first episode and I was just, I was in awe. I remember having chills. I was like, oh my God, yes, this is exactly what we need. As a fan of Emily Dickinson, I was like, oh my gosh, finally we're seeing sort of the complexes, complexities and the nuances of, mm. these, of these poets, these female poets who we've known so much about in our whole lives, but have never seen them like this before. And it was just so awesome. Absolutely. I also think one thing that, that this show has done is made her poetry feel so accessible. Mm. Um, her poetry I have found in the past is very easy to feel intimidated by. It's, it's so, it carries so much weight. Four lines in a poem can just sweep you off your feet and just like kind of rock your world a little bit. And it makes you feel like how, could one be capable of writing such a thing? And then this gives you this sort of insight into the into her mind and into her life and into the idea that she experiences things that might not be so dissimilar from what we do. Um, and it just makes it feel accessible, which is quite cool. Exactly, the way that her art and her mind was kind of visualized and made physical for us to see it became very relatable. It's like, oh, we've all had these types of thoughts. It's just mm -hmm. the way that Emily sort of dealt with them and transformed those thoughts was through her poetry. Exactly. Um, so this season is set during the Civil War. Um, how will the war not only shape Emily's art and her professionally, but also personally? So one thing about this show that that is not too much of a coincidence um, are the parallels that run throughout each season uh, in the world that is taking place that they are living through and ours. Um, and there are these sort of uncanny um, parallels and references that are made that um, are sometimes quite shocking. And in this, having spent so much time in, in isolation, um, although I felt like season one and two may have prepped me for, you know, what it was like to spend a lot of time in your bedroom and uh, be with your own thoughts. Um, <laughs> being in this situation 
where Emily, we find Emily at the beginning of season three feeling so incredibly hopeless um, and, and, and desperate to find a way she can help because of what's going on in the world, i.e. the Civil War. Um, she is feeling so deeply and so uh, greatly the, this, this loss and this pain that is happening. And, and it's sort of running throughout everyone in this story, everyone in her family and in this household. Everybody's lives are very much intertwined in this story, but everyone is also very much on their own personal journey. And they're all feeling this, the weight of, of what's happening in their country. Um, and Emily very quickly feels this need to tend to everyone's wounds. And again, like I mentioned, find a way that she can be a source of, of hope and light. Yeah, it's so beautiful and not so dissimilar to, mm -hmm. you know, what we all went through globally with the pandemic. And I think that I, I thought a lot about this, how art really gave me so much hope in the last year and a half and gave, um, you know, everyone globally so much hope and how we've been doing this for years artists have been helping us sort of cope with tragedy to cope mm. with the unknown um and to cope with feelings of helplessness and loss and i think it's it's a really beautiful way the season's such a beautiful way i think for us to reflect on this last year and a half and the similarities are yeah definitely there definitely how does art give you hope? I am like you, one that definitely turns to to any and every art form for um, a sense of release or a sense of hope, uh, you know, um, a distraction from my own life at times um, to be able to get lost in something, whether it be a piece of art that you can stand and stare at, whether it be a book that you lose yourself in, a movie that you become so um, entranced by somebody else's problems for a moment uh, that you forget about your own. Um, I definitely think that it is a source of hope and, and a source of light. And I feel, I hope, my God, that this show can in any way be that for viewers at any point in their lives. Um, I feel like ultimately this show has always been about being seen and, and seeing. Um, seeing people for who they really are and not labeling a certain behavior or not conforming to a certain uh, standard. Um, and so I, I hope that people can see this and, and see themselves reflected in it somehow and, and hope, you know, that they can turn to it as that source of light for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my final question is, what will you miss most about, you know, being Emily? I think I will miss... Just the creative process. Uh, this, I mentioned this, the scripts were unlike anything I'd ever read. It felt so different, so new. And, and I really meant that. And I, I continued to feel that way throughout each season. And looking back on the whole experience, I can tell you that it is, it was a very unique experience to ones I've, I've had in the past. And I'm so grateful for it. I just will miss um, playing a character in a show that one day has me having the most vulnerable and grounded conversation. And the next day I'm time traveling into the future. Uh, and in this case, having a conversation with a woman in pants um, <laughs> and just covering all bases and, and exploring all different emotions um, and going to places mentally and emotionally that I've never in the past. Um, it's also just really challenged me to think about things that I um, haven't spent enough time thinking about. And I'm really grateful for that as well. So I'll miss the, I'll miss the whole thing, but I do feel like this character is forever a part of me. Her work will forever be a part of my life. And um, that, yeah, that won't change. Oh, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much, Haley. Just like Emily, you are one of the greats. And thank you. Just, uh, have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye.